You're listening to Off the Court, a show dedicated to making you the best version of yourself as an athlete and as a person. I'm Coach Jack, CEO and owner of Close the Gate Hoops. If you want to take your life and game to the next level, this is the podcast for you. Let's get it. Welcome back, gatekeepers, to another episode of Off the Court. Today, I had Coach Aaron pick out another subject that he thought he wanted to talk about that would affect the listeners and what um, affects him the most when he was a kid growing up. And one of them was called Walk Your Path. Some of us might be striving for the same type of destination, but it's very hard for people to come up with the concept that everybody's different and everyone's going to have a different way of getting to that end destination. And we're going to talk about today all the different types of little details of embracing being different. Just a quick update on how the podcast is doing. We're a little over 3,000 downloads. I strongly encourage all of you gatekeepers to keep spreading the word about Off the Court if it has affected you in any way um, and reach out to us if we're sending an influence to you or to anyone else because um, it keeps us motivated and it keeps us wanting to make these episodes to bring out to all of you to influence you to be a better person Um, because that's a goal here. We're not just focused on basketball. We're trying to make you better in all assets of your life. Um, so Aaron, did you want to dive in a little bit about what you want to talk about and why you want to choose this episode of walk your own path? Yes, definitely. So, um, yeah, every single day, um, we start or with, with a new group that comes to CTG. We start out, we have them set a goal. Um, that would be your path to trying to get to that goal. Um, Now, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because a lot of times people will be judged for their goals. They'll be judged for what they're doing to make it to their goals. Um, But I I really strongly encourage you to not let those judgments affect you or knock you off your path, which I see far too often. Um, um, Well, that's 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 really good because that happens a lot. You'll see kids are scared to write something down because. There's other kids in the group, and I'll ask them what their goal is after they all they've all written them down. And some kids are scared to write down playing the NBA or something because they're they don't want their friends to think, oh, you'll never be able to do that and things of that nature. Because that I can definitely directly relate to that when I was growing up. Right, and and it's if you're gonna set one of those goals to the NBA, there's obviously gonna be people judging you because that's such a very very um, it's, it's a hard goal to reach, right? It's, it's tough. Um, and you know, if you look at people like, uh, Jimmy Butler, who's an example that I like to bring up a lot, he was homeless, I think at, around like age 12 or like, like 13, somewhere around there. And, and you think if he told anyone that he was going to be in the NBA when he was a homeless kid at 13 years old, I'm sure he would have gotten weird looks or been laughed at too. So it's, it's, it's not like, it's impossible. Well, statistically, everyone looks at statistics. Yes, st- statistically, it's nearly impossible to make it to the NBA. Um, but everything's impossible until someone does it. Like, there's always going to be people um, breaking what everyone thought was the limit. Steph Curry is a perfect example. Okay, mm-hmm. right now, everyone looks at Steph Curry and thinks there's no better way to shoot the basketball. I guarantee you in 20 years, there's going to be someone that can shoot the ball better than Curry. Because think about 10 yeah. years ago. We thought that about like Ray Allen. We thought he was the best shooter. And they Curry and Ray Allen shoot completely different. They have two completely different shots. Yep. Um, but that's why you always, limits are always going to be stretched. So you can't um, look at your goal and be affected by statistics. Um, and that's a perfect example of Jimmy Butler. It's A lot of it's mind over everything else like just stick into whatever your goal is and no matter what you're going to get there some way shape or form right and and that's the thing is you're the you're the only one that knows your own capabilities in reality every single person all of you listening to this you're you're truly unstoppable if you if you think that you are so in reality you're you're really you are the only one that knows your own capabilities and you are truly unstoppable when you believe that you are unstoppable um and nothing is impossible you know so when when you come up with these goals right um they may seem like lofty goals but you know that you can do them if you put in the work that's 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 awesome and um to go along with your judgment judgment is such a huge deal um 
especially when you're going up as a kid, judgment's something you're going to learn and um, see how to deal with a lot of the times. But it goes on throughout your entire life. Judgment is always going to be there. Um, and this is this directly correlates to something that happened to me recent, recently. Um, I talked in front of that Adams Elementary School um, about Close the Gates message and about our podcast and what we're trying to talk about and what we're trying to do in terms of influencing as many lives as possible. Um, but one of the questions the teachers asked me was, what would you tell your fifth grade self if you could go back in time and tell them something? And what I said was not worrying about what other people think about you. Because that probably, when I really sit down and think about it, that took up so much of my brain space when I was a kid, just worrying about every little thing that someone could be thinking about me. And in reality, nobody's ever thinking about you. Mm -hmm. They probably do it like 1% of the time, and you're thinking like mm -hmm. you're in their head this this whole day. No, it's it, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Um, but even if you do something... There's going to be two sides of the coin on every situation. You're going to get judged either good or bad. You could think it's good, but to someone else it's bad. And to someone else it could be good. Um, so no matter what you do in terms of judgment, it's always going to be wrong. So that's why you can't just waste time spending on things you can't control, which we've referenced so many times in this podcast because it's such an important um, principle to live by. If you can't control someone else's thoughts and you're never going to be able to control that, why are you wasting your own time trying to fix that even though you can't? Mm. And yeah, their their personal opinion, it does not determine your own self-worth, right? That's not that's just not how it works. Um, but yeah, that, that's funny because I remember hearing this thing in, in when I was in high school. It was like, I, I think my mom told me this. She was like, I guarantee you more people are worried about themselves, way more worried about themselves or what they're wearing than to care about anything that you're doing or wearing. That's, if that makes sense. That's so true. Um, but yeah, going along with people's judgment, um, you know, it's, I've been guilty of this too. I, I, I will have a goal doing something and I'll hear someone's opinion of it. And then I will like modify my goal or change it to make it more realistic in their, uh -huh. in their eyes. But, um, in, but you, you, again, you know that you're capable of it, um, because you are unstoppable. So w there's no reason for them to be able to change your own goals in your head. And I think I remember you talking about this too, Aaron, um, in recent podcasts, is that you should, even if, if you can, overstretch your goal because you're going to get farther than you thought you could if you overstretch your goal by um, falling to a higher standard. Like, I had a goal of playing Division One basketball mm -hmm. growing up. Um, for my athleticism, that's pretty unrealistic because I'm still working on it. I'm trying to... <laughs> trying to learn how to fly. Uh, but that made me obviously work really hard towards that goal. Um, now I have this basketball training business where I can affect kids in terms of the basketball world and in terms of life world. In my eyes, there's no better job than that. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a result of all the hard work I put in for the division one goal. Um, you don't really realize it, but everything happens for a reason. So reaching for a higher standard of a goal that you probably couldn't get is actually going to take you to a better place than you ever could have gotten if you set your standards lower. Or like you were saying, come up with a more realistic goal to fit someone else's opinion. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, and the example I used, I was, that's when my goal my senior year was to win state in the 800 meters and I ended up getting second and I wouldn't have been anywhere near second place if I had not had that goal mm -hmm. that's nuts second place yeah so um going along with judgment right and you being the only one that can control what really goes on in your life i was reading about this quote um this guy napoleon hill um he said you are the master of your own destiny you can influence direct it and control your own environment you can make your life what you want it to be and um, along with that, I was reading this thing from this. He's a motivational speaker. His name is James Taylor. Um, he had this analogy that you are either the captain or the passenger. Um, the captain determines where you want to go, but the captain also has a lot more risk, right? Um, there's more failure from him or uh, opportunities for failure um, while captaining a ship. Um, and you're a lot more comfortable as a passenger, right? But the passenger doesn't determine where you want to go or where you get to go, which is obviously going to be a lot more low risk. I, I personally love talking about risk because majority of people and parents 
would encourage low risk with basically all facets of life you know play it safe um get a college degree i'm not saying college is bad but get a college degree get a good safe job have a retirement account um so you're just going to be safe your whole life uh from running close the gate myself if you want to get to where you want to go you have to be extremely risky and this goes right to what we were talking about um shoot for the moon and you'll fall amongst the stars or something like that Mm -hmm. um when you're insanely risky yes you're going to fail and you could fail miserably sometimes but it's always going to end up in the end better than if you played it safe um and that's why i close the gate has been able to do so many things and accomplish so much in such little time is because i am not afraid to go all in with something if i see it um and i'm not afraid to and this is something kids will learn as they get older, never, ever, ever shy away from investing in yourself. So, and what I mean by that is anything that's going to make you a better human or a smarter human or more intelligent, and this could be anything from books, uh, audio books, any, any personal development thing that could um, increase your knowledge in any way, shape, or form, or say your business, investing back into your business and close the gate, um, you should be doing that as much as you possibly can. Like me personally, this year I probably spent like five hundred dollars on audiobooks, and people will look at me like you're stupid. You could do so much with that money, but they don't see that that's affecting so many things um, that even I can't notice sometimes. Like talking in front of Adams Elementary School, like a year ago, I was not a very smart human. And now I know all these little things because I'm constantly trying to learn and investing in myself through these types of things. So me and Jack right now, we're coaching a girls AAU um, team. And this has been going on for about a month, two months maybe. Just to add to this, all I would do in the car is just listen to music, okay? Like, obviously, um, is listening to music productive? Not necessarily. Yeah, music's awesome. I love music. I listen to a bunch of types of music. But Jack put me on to listen to audiobooks or listen to podcasts way more. And now that's all we listen to on our way to these tournaments in Milwaukee, to Appleton, and Chicago, Minnesota. But like after listening to these podcasts, whether it's basketball related or just a Joe Rogan podcast with Elon Musk, super intelligent guys. <laughs> and it's so interesting to hear about these guys and you just feel like you're more productive and you know a lot more knowledge about these people. A lot of, a lot of the times, too, the things that um, come up when you're talking to people or even in your own thoughts are the random things that um, you were learning about, like, say, through a podcast or YouTube, like the Elon Musk um, artificial intelligence stuff. Like, that, that type of stuff some people will see as a waste because it's not really relevant to your personal life. Um, but it'll come up a lot later on um, and you didn't even realize it because you weren't looking for that information. So sometimes even random information can be extremely helpful as a human. So what I'm trying to say is I encourage you to be risky. Obviously you have to have management of your risk, um, but I wouldn't want you to shy away from risk in terms of low risk because you're gonna be able to accomplish what you wanna accomplish if you're a risky type of person, but still manage it. Yeah, um, and and in my opinion, people are way too safe bec- and because life is just too short to be safe right now, right? I mean, it's you have to take risks to really get to these goals that you guys have. Um, and again, that goes back to you being confident in yourself and knowing that you're unstoppable, right? It happens to so many people. They get to the end of their life and they just they wish they would have done things differently. And a lot of that stems from shying away from risk in my opinion right and that the coolest quote that i've ever heard in my life is a man has two lives his second one starts when he realizes the first one ends and that one that is such a cool quote um and it 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 just goes back to life being just way too short to be caught up on things that don't matter or not to be enjoying life or to be playing it too safe and that directly correlates with judgment and um risk like you were talking about like you should not be wasting time worrying about others opinions when you barely have enough time in this life in the first place i can't remember who i heard this from it might have been a book i was reading or it was some podcast i was listening to but it was talking about judgment and 
the day you stop worrying about the judgment from other people is the day that you stop judging others. Um, and that's another thing too, like wasting brain space, judging other people, like looking at something and what they're wearing and in your head, you're like, what is this idiot wearing? Or some reference like that, that's negative. You have no idea what's going on that, on in that person's life. Um, and that's what, why we always love to say that someone always has it worse. Okay. You have, you can never put yourself in someone else's shoes and what they've been through. Um, and that's why we have such a natural habit of worrying about what others think because we do the same to others so if you want to reverse that um, psychology just stop worrying about other people and look at it from a holistic view and knowing that this person probably has it worse than i do um so you can't judge them by what they're wearing or how they look or how they act because even that's affected by what happened to them previously in their childhood and they can't control that either um so stop judging other people and then you'll start to see in your own thoughts that you're not worrying about what others think about you. So that's probably the first step that I would recommend um, in starting to walk your own path like we have in the title above. That's good. And how and going along with that, how are you how are you measuring people's worth? Like just based on what they're wearing or how they look or what they're doing, right? And it's it's a lot deeper than that and people don't realize that. You may see someone, they're not wearing cool clothes like you are, but that doesn't mean that they are lesser than you, if and, that makes sense. Yeah, and success is a variable, and I've said this before. Success to one person is complete failure to the other person. It all goes back to your perception and frame of mind. Like, you could be in the worst situation of your life but you could flip, always flip it to a positive. Whenever I have a totally negative situation, I just tell myself everything happens for a reason because in some way, shape, or form, it's gonna turn out in the better. And that's all your perception and frame of mind. Um, so I thought that was a good ad, Aaron. Walking your own path does not mean that you cannot ever learn things from each other or you can't listen to what other people have to say to you because um, a lot of times we, uh, talking to other people and being with each other, you can learn so much. Like I've learned so much from all of my friends. Um, and I hope they think the same about me because it's, it's one of the greatest resources you guys have is each other. Um, now that's definitely, you don't want to listen to negative things that people are saying to each other, but constructive criticism or hearing things that could better you as a person that can be, that can have a positive impact. That goes right in. I wrote down stuff about um, peer pressure has a huge impact on walking your own path in terms of when you're growing up in middle school and high school. And that directly stems from judgment. Um, you do things that you don't want to do and you know they're out of character because you're scared of what other people are going to say things or think about you. And, um, we all three of us have gone through the exact same situation. And I'm going to give a shout out to um, one of our CTG students, Blake Bowditch. Okay. I got a text. Um, I don't know if it was necessarily from him, but it might have been from his mom. But he took away one podcast episode we were talking about um, alcohol and drugs in high school. And I said that I didn't, I went all of high school without that. And that directly affected him. And I just want to let all of you know that if you're going through that, you will regret the decision to cave into peer pressure when it's out of character later on. And Aaron can talk about this from direct experience. Um, but those tiny decisions will truly alter your path and where you're going. And I wrote that too. Habits are such a huge deal. Um, I'm trying to get to where your destination is and walking your own path. By making that choice to, say, drink alcohol underage or um, do drugs when your friend's telling you that you should and you're going to be cool if you do these drugs, those are going to affect you later on in your life so much more than you actually know. And we've, we've seen it um, with people around us. People, some people have just dropped off and growing up you're like, I would have never seen this happening to this person. But it all stemmed from that one choice of caving into peer pressure, and that directly stems from judgment from other people. Yeah, the most the most successful people, they're obviously not going to fit into norms, or they're not going to uh, seem cool at the start because they're doing something completely different than anyone else. But that's what makes them different, and that's why being successful or the top most successful people are not 
the norm. That's not where most people end up. And it's, it's because of their, their own, that's, it's because of what they did before uh, in not falling into things like that or not, not wanting to be the same as everybody else um, that really got them there. And again, poor choices, they happen, right? It doesn't mean you're a bad person. And again, all of that type of judgment stuff is relative. Um, but if you make consistent bad choices over time, then that's going to directly change and alter um, what your path is and what your destination is. Um, but that's why you have to reflect on what your choices are. Like if you make a poor choice, and I always say everything happens for a reason, there's a reason you made that poor choice, but you have to reflect on it and then fix it. If you continue to make that poor choice, which is what most people do with peer pressure, and that's why people get in to addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol, um, that's when it really starts to become a problem. And that's why we're not labeling it as bad. We're just um, discouraging it because we know from past experience what it can do to people. Overview of walking your own path. Judgment, one, is such a huge deal um, on trying to get to where you want to be. Not wasting time and energy worrying about worrying about what other people think because they probably aren't even thinking about you in the first place and the number one step um, to becoming free of judgment is not judging other people yourself and then you'll start to see within your thoughts that you're not worrying about what other people think um, the second biggest thing that we talked about in walking your path was risk um, and yes we do want to manage our risk but we always, even with our Let It Rain team, Connor, we encourage taking risks in terms of stealing passes or being overly aggressive than playing it safe because um, nine times out of 10, it's always gonna work out for the better when you're taking that high risk situation. And that's why majority of people get to the end of their life and they're regretful and they look back and they're like, I wish I would've done this, I wish I would've done that. And that directly stemmed from playing it safe and not taking a lot of risk because they wanted to be comfortable. And we talk about all the time, make yourself uncomfortable. So we encourage you gatekeepers to take risks. The third thing that we talked about that directly correlates with judgment is um, peer pressure and tiny little decisions in terms of habits that directly alter your life. And again, it's okay to make poor choices sometimes, gatekeepers, but continuing to make poor choices without reflection is when it starts to become a big problem. Um, and again, if any of you ever need ha any help with any of this um, in terms of growing up with high school and middle school and all sorts of judgment things um, of this nature, do not be afraid to reach out to any of us coaches, me, Coach Jack, Coach Aaron, or Coach Connor. We'd be happy to help any of you. And we love getting texts um, from people listening to this podcast and it directly influencing their lives and um, them as a person. That, that means a lot to all of us and it keeps us motivated to keep going. So I talked about earlier in the episode when I went to Adams Elementary and I they asked me, um, what would you tell your fifth grade self? And I this directly correlated to walking with your path. Um, I said not worrying about other people's opinions. So I wanted to ask you guys, what would you tell your fifth grade self if you could go back in time um, to make that person or to get to where you wanted to go faster? Definitely the title of this podcast, Walk Your Own Path. I definitely thought throughout middle school and probably my freshman and sophomore year of high school, I was probably a follower. Um, and like Aaron said earlier in the podcast, probably a passenger, not a captain. Um, That's a great, do you want to expand? Like if, I mean, most, most listeners would understand what you mean by follower, but some of our younger listeners, like, what do you mean by that? Cause that's really good. And I, we should have used that word earlier in this podcast. So yeah, what I mean by a follower is I'm kind of just tagging along with the person in charge. Um, I feel like for a couple of years in middle school and probably my freshman year of high school, I was definitely the passenger in the seat. So I definitely did get better at that and um, wanted to create my own path through my junior and senior year of high school. I thought I took more initiative in school and definitely in athletics. That's, that's awesome. So you were walking someone else's path and your advice would be to walk your own path. I love it. Mine would probably be that life is not as permanent as everyone thinks it is when they're younger. Meaning, um, when you're when you're little, you have a very concealed view of what you think life is. Yeah, and it's it it's so much bigger than you think at that point. And 
things that matter then in the grand scheme of things in your whole life, which is a lot longer than you think when you're younger, um, do not matter at all when it, you're, when you're, uh, when you get older. Sorry, Aaron. I just no, want to chime in. Isn't it so funny how the older you get, the less, you know, mm -hmm. because you realize how much more there is. You, mm -hmm. you, you could literally read or listen your entire life and you're still not going to know one percent of what you could know in this entire world right um that was a great quote you just had there it's not you like you think everything's so defined when you're younger it's mm -hmm. it's not at all like we were talking about this the other day when you're growing up you think every parent knows everything yeah and now that we're growing up we're like they knew nothing they mm -hmm. they were throwing their throwing themselves into the fire just as much as we are now yep yeah, so that'd be that'd probably be my my thing would be just that life is not as permanent as you may think it is. It changes up a lot. So what would be an like what what do you mean like um when you thought your life was defined like as a kid? So for example, I guess when I I remember when I left elementary school to go to middle school and I was really sad because I was leaving all of my friends there that I had in elementary school and I I I was I was so sad because of this big change and I wasn't going to be at this school that I had been at my, like my whole life, right? That's all I had known. But now I can't remember a single moment from my time in elementary school now that I'm a 20 year old kid. So it's just when you're, when you're younger, it's crazy going from that's all, you know, is that little, is that school? Um, and then now I'm 20 years old. I don't remember a single moment from that school. So it's, it's just, it's pretty crazy how, little it seems now but how big it was back then that's 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 awesome i love that what is you, both of your favorite sports team that you were on of all time any grade any on. sport oh you got to go with the janesville express the the og fourth grade team um we you were on the express right yep i was yeah. i love the express i gotta go with them uh this one's hard i have a couple but Probably my favorite was uh, JV baseball year with Coach Liebeck and Coach Wright. We went 21-2, and two, I think, beat Sun Prairie twice. Nope, just once, sorry. And But my best friends were on that team with me, so I thought that was definitely my favorite year. Uh, you two, we're, all three of us are big Packer fans, big Wisconsin fans. How do you guys feel about Aaron Rodgers and his rumors? I, I know some people might disagree with me on this, um, but I still think Rodgers with one Super Bowl is extremely disrespectful. Um, I think if he was in Brady's shoes that he would probably have more rings, which I know is super biased. Uh, but if he leaves, he leaves, and I'm going to... I'm going to cop a Rodgers jersey on whatever new team he's on. Yeah, I, I think he's gone. I think I'm rocking with Rodgers, but he's been a diva this whole time. Like, he just... he's. I get that he's frustrated. We probably should have gotten him a couple more rings, but he's being a little, a little soft right now. It's just we're we're not even gonna know how to handle ourselves. That's a problem. Brett Favre and Rodgers, and now I've literally, well, I've literally since I was a Packers fan, like the first I remember watching like two years of Brett Favre maybe, and then other than that, all I've known is Aaron Rodgers. So it's it's Jordan Love time, baby. If if I had to pick one of my favorite athlete of all time watching, it's definitely Rodgers. Like there's no one I liked watching more than Rodgers. Yeah, he's so talented. But I saw a thing, I think it was a couple of days ago. We had Bart Starr for 16 years, Favre for 16 years, and um this would be Rodgers' uh 17th year if he plays on the Packers. So, this year. it's going to be 16, 16 and 16. Yep. Yes. He did that on purpose. Uh Oh, well, everything happens for a reason, right, gatekeepers? Um, awesome. Thanks, Coach Aaron and Coach Connor, for joining on this podcast again. Um, we're going to have a lot more to come just like this. And again, if you guys want us to talk about anything specific or anything that's challenging you throughout your life right now, just let us know, and we'd love um, to sit down and talk about it. Thanks again, gatekeepers. I'm Coach Jack. We out, baby. Peace.